What's going on, everyone? So, man, I just woke up and I felt that the Lord wanted me to talk about this. And I've been waiting, honestly, for about maybe 10 years to address some of the stuff that I am about to address right now. A lot of that has to do with, you know, people who are uh, connected with me, associated with me. You know, I've had the privilege, if you guys know anything about my life, I've lived you know, doing so many different things, been to so many different places, been connected to so many different types of people that I've had some very unique experiences that most people, you know, um, they just, they don't have them. And so, you know, my perspective might be a little bit different, you know, than your average church person, um, you know, and, and we're going to talk about some of those things. And so you see the title, you know, do I need deliverance. All right. And so we're going to break that down in a moment, but I just want you guys, and this is just going to be from my straight from my heart. All right. Just full, you know, uh, transparency, honesty. I hope, I hope that my, uh, I don't want to say haters. I don't want to come across that way, but I hope that people who can't stand me can watch this video and really just, uh, understand my heart and why I'm saying what I'm saying. And I know for a fact because of what God is doing in the earth right now, um, this is something that I've been talking about it, you know, for a while. Uh, and it's not popular. And a lot of people don't like it uh, because of pride, because of religion, because of whatever. But I know for a fact that I think circumstances are going to happen um, in America that causes this to become a topic, right? That causes this. Right now, we're so comfortable and complacent that we can still sit there and be divided and, you know, argue about a lot of different things. And so let me, I want to play you guys this clip from the very beginning of this video, just so you can understand my background and kind of where I come from. All right. So give me a second. I just, I want you to see it. It's different for me to say it, but I want you to to see it. All right. Uh, just like my childhood, my life, how I got saved. This is the kind of stuff, you know, that, that I grew up. Gospel singers singing secular music and secular singers singing gospel music and preachers looking like motivational speakers and motivational speakers trying to look like preachers and psychics trying to be prophets and prophets acting like psychics. And, and we're standing out here in the middle and we don't know where to go. Yourself an apostolic preacher called to preach the gospel to every creature, and you don't pray, you're a walking frog, you are a hypocrite. You have no right to be in any position of apostolic leadership if you don't pray. Have you ever been on a three day fast? Is this okay to preach consecration today? Have you ever prayed all night? Have you ever fallen asleep on the pews at your church and woke up the next morning and went straight to work? I said you're anointed that means when you walk into your school systems uh, the devils in that school begin to tremble that means when you walk into your workplace uh, you walk in with power and authority so the old school black church you know they dancing and stuff like that i grew up and, and I'm we better be down. willing to carry uh, holiness when everyone else uh, is laying it down so i wanted you to actually see it hear a little bit of it right this is when, when my mom, you know, got saved, right? These are the kind of churches I grew up in. So down in, in Louisiana, right? Um, they, they were door knocking, witnessing, you know, got saved. My mom got saved. You know, she stopped smoking, all of that kind of stuff. Whole life changed. And my dad was uh, in the army. So we moved around a lot, right? So I went to uh, churches like this in Germany, uh, in the Virgin Islands, um, you know, uh, Pentecostal churches, apostolic churches, uh, and a lot of these churches, right? Women can only wear skirts, no jewelry. You know, we wear suits on Sunday. And um, just from those little clips right there, right? I don't care what nobody says. You can't tell me that those people aren't saved. Now, there's people out there that will tell you all of those people in the clip that I showed you, because of theological differences or whatever you want to call it, they're going to hell, right? They're just fake. They're wolves in sheep's clothing. And it's like, I don't know how, just even from those clips, if you have any discernment, right, 
how you can believe that. Now, I'm not saying that everybody, uh, you know, is, is right and I'm vouching for everybody. But there's people who will really say, you know, there's these these theological wars and things like that, that everybody in those clips that I showed you, they're going to hell. They're false teachers. And so I lived it. I saw God uh, change my mom. I saw God change me. I saw, you know, uh, what God did in my life. I saw when I was suicidal, you know, as a, as a child how God kept me. I remember, I tell you guys this story. I remember walking to the bridge and I remember getting ready to jump and wanting to kill myself. And I, and I remember clear as day, it was like, I felt the hand of God. It was ice cold outside here in Chicago. I felt the hand of God, like grab the back of my neck. And I heard clear as day, don't do it, son. I have big plans for your life. And there are people out there who will tell you I'm lying. There are people out there who would tell you, I didn't hear from God. There are people out there who say God doesn't speak. He doesn't talk like that. All I can tell you, right? It's just like with the blind man, when the Pharisees came to him and they said, you know that, you know, Jesus is a this and is that. He's like, look, all I know is I was blind and now I can see. All I know is I was going to commit suicide and God saved my life. And then growing up as an adult, I joined the army. I went to Iraq. I went to Afghanistan. I experienced a lot of different things. I know what it's like to grow up in church and, and it's uh, religious, you know what I'm saying, uh, to a sense, you know what I'm saying, uh, as far as like it's strict, you know, there's a lot of rules. I know what it's like, as that man of God was saying, to go to a Friday night, all night prayers where you're praying from, you know, 6 p.m. till 6 a.m. in the morning, right? I know what it's like to go to uh, Sunday school at well, eight o'clock morning service, go to Sunday school at 10 o'clock, go to regular service at 11 o'clock, and then go to church at seven o'clock in the evening. So I know what it's like to be at church all day long. And I, I'm saying all of this because I really want y'all to understand what I'm about to say, right? I know what it's like to, to feel the presence of God, to see the transformation. I know what it's like to backslide. I went in the army, you know, fornicating, committing adultery, making a lot of different mistakes, right? I know what it's like to have money. I know what it's like to have poor. I know what it's like to go to war. Uh, I know what it's like to live in the hood. I know what it's like to go to all black church. I know what it's like to go to, uh, you know, all white church. I know I've seen it all. I've, I've been, um, you know, wrongfully mistreated by police officers and I've been on the other side of it. So my point is I've had so many different experiences. And then by the time that I really blew up with the social media and the internet, you know what I'm saying? I, my perspective is different than the average person because when you are privy to certain information and you see certain things, it changes the way that you once looked at things, right? Uh, you, some of you will say when you were in the relationship, you know, you have the googly eyes and you couldn't see the red flags. And then when you came out, something changed. And so, um, I, I told you guys a story being in the army, you know, almost about to lose my life, bullets flying, got in the shootout. And God, the point is God brought me out once again. He gave me mercy. He gave me grace. He changed my life. You know, I don't sleep around no more. I don't do the things that I used to do. No, I'm not perfect. But the thing is, I've had a real encounter with God and God has changed my life. And so when the Bible says, you know, you will know them by the fruit. One of the things that I look for when I deal with people is their, is their transformation. People are quick to go to theology. People are quick to go to doctrine. But what I look at is, did this person have an encounter with God? And is there fruit that their life is being transformed and there's the, that their life is being changed? Some people say, you know what? You need to meet the Pentecostal Jesus, the Trinitarian Jesus, this Jesus, that Jesus, you know what I'm saying? They got like these boxes. But what I look at is, has the person had an encounter with God that changed their life? That's the first step. Because the Bible says the Holy Spirit will lead you and guide you into all truth. Knock and the door shall be open. Seek and you will find. So here's the thing. I was super, super low, super messed up, made a lot of mistakes. And the point is, God had mercy on me. And so when I started doing these Facebook videos while I was in the army, I just wanted people to know, like, there is a God. God can change your life. That God is Jesus. Jesus is the best thing that can ever happen to you. Jesus will, you know, whatever is broken. Like, my life was so broken. I said, whatever is broken, 
Jesus can fix it. If you're suicidal, if you're dis uh, discouraged, if you made mistakes, if you grew up without your father, I'm a living witness that Jesus can change it. And so the videos, you know, they started blowing up on the internet. And people are like, man, this is blessing me. This has touched me. You know, I was getting 25 million views here, 10 million views here, world star sharing it, all these different things, right? Now, and I'm going to talk about some stuff. I'm not exposing. I'm not going to try to be too long-winded. But the point is, many of you have heard me say this before. For the most part, my, my social media platforms were growing like crazy. Everybody was cool with it until people said, well, what church do you come from? And that's why I showed you guys the clips at the beginning of this video of these preachers. You don't know, some of you might know, but you don't know what denomination they're from or anything like that, right? And so if you listen to those clips, especially that first one, maybe maybe I should pull it up and just play it for those of you who are coming late because I, I really don't want to rush this. I really want to share my heart because I believe this is something that God is trying to say to the whole church, to the whole America. And it, it's not a popular message. People don't like it because there's pride, there's religion involved. But I'm at the point like, look, I just got to do what God is telling me to do. Couple of clips so you can, the Bible says without a vision, the people perish, right? I want you to just see, I'm not going to play the whole thing again, but I just kind of want you to see it. This is the kind of you know, stuff that I grew up in. Right, the kind of singer, preaching singer, that I was around. This is how I got secular saved. Secular singers singing gospel music and preachers looking like motivational speakers and motivational speakers trying to look like preachers and psychics trying to be prophets and prophets acting like psychics and, and we're standing out here in the middle and we don't know where to go. <laughs> yourself an apostolic preacher called to preach the gospel to every creature and you don't pray you're a walking frog you are a hypocrite you have no right to be in any position of apostolic leadership if you don't pray have you ever been on a three-day fast is this okay to preach consecration today have you ever prayed all night have you ever fallen asleep so my point is this right you see the clips i want you to see it this is how, this is the kind of churches where I met the Lord. And yes, you couldn't wear jewelry. Uh, the women only wear skirts, all that. I went through all of that stuff and I submitted because the Bible says submit to um, them that have rule over you. So I'm the kind of guy like, you know, I'm going to follow the rules. Even if maybe I don't agree with everything, I'm going to follow the rules. And nobody can tell me that those people are not saved. Nobody can tell me that the presence of God is not there. And the thing is like, people, you know, all these arguments started coming up. Well, you go to the wrong type of church. And because, you know, it's not this church, this denomination, it's not real. Now, here's where I'm going to get real. All right. This is this is where I'm going to start getting real about this stuff. I've seen racism in those kind of churches. Right. And, and this is the kind of stuff that people don't want to talk about. Now, in those clips, you saw more, you know, I, I hate to say it like this, but that's like the, the UPC Pentecostal um, you know, the more the Caucasian side of it. But for a, a good amount of my time here in Chicago, I was in the black, uh, what you would call apostolic church, the PCAF, right? Many years. So I, like I said, I have a lot of experience with different types of church being in church. Same thing, just the black side of it. You only wear skirts, you can't wear, you know, all of that kind of stuff. And here's the reality. Even though God was uh, there, even though there's genuine people there, I've seen some horrible things happen. I've seen people at the very top, the top leaders, right? Uh, and this was more so on the, the black side, right? Uh, in the PCAF, I've seen preachers molesting girls, right? And everybody's going to church. And everybody, we're supposed to be spiritual. They can't see it. You know what I'm saying? Um, I've seen people be hypocrites. I've seen girls who have the long skirt and they will not hesitate to flip it up and do whatever. But see, the thing is, that is not a reflection of everybody. I know that God was there. Now, here's my point. So when my social media stuff started blowing up, that side 
they didn't really fully accept me and my family. And that's the truth, right? When we're in Louisiana, you have a white woman, you know, with mixed kids. And so sometimes you're not everybody's favorite. That's just the way it was. When I came to the black church, right? You have a single white woman, four mixed kids. And the reality is I experienced some things. I experienced some prejudice. I experienced some kind of, uh, you know, even racism, if you want to call it. Uh, well, no, that's what it was in the church, right? I experienced a lot of bad things in the church and the people were not perfect, right? But God was there, right? God, God was saving people. People were changed. Just because some people are being idiots or being fake, it doesn't mean that, you know, everybody is like that. And so I'm the kind of person that I judge the individual based off their fruit, not based off who I see them with, not based off their organization, not based off the color of their skin, based off of their fruit that I see and what I discern of them in the spirit. So the bottom line is I saw a whole lot of mess. I come to the other side and people say, well, you know, if you're, if you come out of that, they're false and all those people are going to hell and, and the Trinity and all of this kind of stuff. Right? I didn't even know anything about this Trinity stuff and, and all of that kind of stuff. Right. You guys know my stance on that. I don't, I'm at a place in my life. I don't do none of these man-made words. I believe everything in the Bible. I believe in the God. I believe in the father. I believe in the son. We've had that conversation a million times because at the end of the day, Jesus said, follow. If you follow my words, you're my disciple. And the reality, those are man-made words. People can give their feelings about it. That's the reality. You're following what a man said, a man's explanation. I just stick to what the Bible says. That's what, and I do it because of this. So I come to the other side of, you know, connecting with people and stuff like that, because the, the place that I come from, they're not big with the social media, the internet stuff. Right. And let's be honest, when I was in the army, the fornication, the adultery, I got divorced. So it was like, they were never really going to use me. So I was, I was tolerated, but not fully like, I was not going to be who God has called me to be within any of those organizations. And so God pulled me out, right? That's, this the bottom line. I went to Korea, uh, you know, I, to the point I was what, 25, 26. Right. And so God pulled me out of that. And I remember being in Korea and it's just me and God, and I'm just going up in the mountain I don't have no church. I don't have anything. And that's where my ministry, remember, my ministry blew up in Korea. So I come back to the States, try to reconnect, you know, to those churches that I grew up in. It's not working. I started getting invited to uh, preach. And everywhere I got invited to preach, you know, it's these, uh, you know, Trinitarian churches and things like that. And so I have all these people trying to, uh, you know, you're this, you're fake, you're this, because you don't believe this, you don't say this. And I'm like, I know that God was with me. I know that God changed me. I know that something happened and you're trying to tell me that it didn't happen or it's not real or I'm fake or I'm a wolf because I don't have the label that you have. And here's why I am the way that I am. I want you guys to understand what I'm saying. So I start moving around in these other spaces and I saw the people who I remember there was a guy, so I'm not going to say his name. It doesn't matter. Because remember, I started preaching on the internet before people were preaching on the internet. Nobody was really doing that. But there was one guy, um, he was making videos and he was attacking me. You know, Marcus Rogers is a wolf. He's a this, he's that. I'm like, I'm praying private. I said, God, this dude has no discernment. Like, I love you. How can he not see that? A couple years later, this guy gets exposed for doing drugs. He gets exposed for... Uh, sending pictures, you know, to girls, like God exposed them big time. And so since I've been on this other side, I've seen the same thing. Christians getting drunk, Christians getting high, Christians being lukewarm. The people who attack me or have something to say about me, I, I look at them, I say, but, but you're not as bold as me. You're not talking about the thing. You're not doing the things that I'm doing, but you're critiquing me because I don't have the right name. And so I started seeing like on both sides, I'm not accepted. On both sides, I see hypocrisy. And I'm not saying that I'm better. I'm just saying like everybody's trying to pull me this way, pull me that way. And I'm seeing flaws and hypo hypocrisy. But there's this pride where everybody thinks that they're the final authority. And everybody thinks that their stuff doesn't stink. And everybody's so self-righteous on every side. And so everybody's claiming to just have the full truth, right? But I'm saying why? And you guys have seen some of these big uh, ministers. What is it? Ravi? Uh, Zacharias, um, a lot of them just getting exposed, sex scandals, all of this stuff. And I'm like, man, what is going on? So now I'm I, I'm discouraged, right? 
I say, you guys told me that my doctrine's wrong, and this, but you're not living it. I don't see you make, I don't see you in these streets like I'm in the streets. I don't see you being bold like I'm being bold. You know, and that's not to toot my own horn. It's just a fact, right? It's like when you look and it's like you're talking, but where is the fruit? You're talking. And now on top of that, you guys are getting exposed. And so I want, I'm saying all this because I want you guys to really understand my heart, what I've seen. And so then uh, you got that side, if you want to call it that, right? That oh, the Pentecostal side, whatever you got the other side. And so now I'm, 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 I'm seeing like, there's these different Christian cliques, these Christian worlds. And it's like, what it seems like most Christians do is like, you have to just submit yourself to a box. It's like, you have to pick a box. Like, okay, do I just go over here and roll with these guys? Do I just go over here and roll with these guys? And my point is, even though there's flaws, there's hypocrisy, there's pastors getting exposed. The thing is, I remember God humbled me. And this is where the de deliverance comes in. I got invited to preach in Texas. It was like the second church I ever went to preach to. And this is in the midst of like everybody like just attacking me. I'm like, God, how can they not see that I love you? Look at how hard I go. Look at how consistent I am. Look at look, the things that I'm talking about. I'm risking my platform, all of this kind of stuff, right? And so there was some hurt there. There's some wounds there. There's some rejection there. Remember, I've been, I've never been in the cool kids club in, in any Christian church, Christian circle. I've always been the weirdo mixed kid you know, in the black church or in the white church. Uh, and then when I was older, you know, I made mistakes, got divorced. So look, we love you. We are happy that you're here, but we can't use you because you're, you're, you, you've been divorced. You got this going on. You don't have this picture, perfect, pretty life. You know what I'm saying? And my heart, I'm hurt by that because I'm like, yeah, it's easy for you to judge me, but you don't know what I've been through. You don't know, uh, the, the, the things that I saw, the, the molestations, the rape, the growing up, without my father. And I'm like learning through trial and error. You don't see the, the nights that I was living in the shelter. And I'm wondering where is my dad and wondering when my dad is going to come, you know what I'm saying? And, and so I just want to be a family. And so I don't want to be a player. I don't want to sleep around with a bunch of girls. So yes, like the first girl I, I marry her and it, it wasn't, you know, I just, I just do what I'm doing. Then they send me to Iraq. They send me to Afghanistan. We get divorced. You don't, you don't know my pain. It's easy to judge when you, you, if we switch places, you probably wouldn't survive in my life. And that's what I'm thinking. And that's what I'm praying privately. But the bottom line is everybody on the outside looking in, it's like, hey, we tolerate you. We're happy you're here, but we can't use you. And so I'm rejected. I'm rejected. God pulls me out of all of that. And I'm in Korea, no church. It's just me and God. And you guys know the story. What happens God gives me this big mega platform. He says, look, these people are rejecting you. These people don't want to use you. I'm going to show you I can use you. And so that's why I, I tell people, they say, oh, Marcus Rogers is the pastor of the rejects, the mess ups, the people who don't have these, you know, politically correct, pretty lies. I said, that's fine because I'm going to use my life as a sermon that God can use anybody. He can restore anything. I joke about having, you know, my baby moms at Christmas with my wife, with my, all my family and kids and, and people get mad about it, but it's, 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 it wasn't a, be a beautiful situation in the beginning, but God made it something beautiful because his grace and his mercy. And I'm not ashamed of that. That's why I tell people, yes, I made mistakes. I fornicated. I committed adultery. I did things out of rejection. I did things out of hurt. And I just try to be real because I seen in church how people politic. I seen in church how people get on the camera and everybody thinks they're so holy and so right. But when I meet you privately behind the scenes, it's a whole different thing. And so people say, well, Marcus Rogers is controversial. He's this, he's that. And the reality is from where I'm looking at, I'm, you guys are used to people being fake and you like that. You're used to people getting on camera and just showing you what, you, what you're comfortable seeing, what they think that you're going to like and not being real. I'm the kind of person you've seen me cry on cam camera. You've seen me be vulnerable. Right. And so the bottom line is I'm like, God, people saying I'm this, I'm that, you know, I love you. I know what we have privately. Right. And I remember I asked God, I said, God, do you want me to pick a side? Because I just want the truth. I just want what's right. And a lot of people, they're not going to believe this. They're not going to agree. I said, God, do you want me to come out and say I'm a Trinitarian? Do you want me to come out and just stick with what I grew up with? What do you want me to do? And I never forget. God said, I don't want you to do either. He says, if they can't discern who you are in the spirit and they need you 
to have a religious man-made name. Think about what I'm saying. When my videos go back and look, Facebook, you know, they done censored me now. YouTube, they censor me. IG, they censor me because I talk about a lot of different things. But there was a point, every video that I was doing on Facebook, you know, 25 million. Some some even hit were hit. I think one hit like 200 million. They, it was on Yahoo News. It was on World Star. Remember, I was preaching on the internet when it wasn't popular. So it was just everybody was loving it until they said, hold up, you're not in the right box. Now think about what I'm saying. The video blessed you until you found out that the, the label that you prefer was not on the box. Think about what I'm saying. Like the video was blessing you. Everybody loved me until I came out and said, this is what I came from, right? And so there's all this backlash. And I remember I said, Lord, what do you want me to do? This is, this is where I really want you guys to understand my heart. It would be easy for me to just pick a side and roll with it and make people happy. If I came out and I said, hey, I'm, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, some people would be happy. And so I asked the Lord, and you know what the Lord said? Don't do it. He said, if they cannot discern who you are in the spirit, if they can't discern that you love me, they're not in the spirit anyway. And then he took me to Ephesians 4, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, even as you're called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. You either have Jesus, you fill with the Holy Spirit or you don't. Right. The spirit of Christ, the Bible says, or you don't see a lot of people are running around and they're this denominational name, this label. And it's like, this is what we do because a lot of people have no discernment. And this is why there's so much confusion out there. You're looking at the label on the bottle to determine whether I'm going to take a sip. Does it have the right, right label in order for me to indulge? It needs to be Pentecostal. It needs to be Trinitarian. It needs to be this instead of focusing on what's on the inside. And the Lord says, if they can't discern what is on the inside of you, they're not that deep anyway. And so I had to make a decision. The easy thing for me to do would be pick a label. Because then I'm going to fit in with somebody. And of course, I would love that. But the Lord told me he doesn't want me to do that because that's part of the reason why people's discernment is so down. We just get in our little click and we think everything that we do is right. Nobody can challenge us. And if you challenge it, that's strange fire. If you start acting, asking questions, they kick you out. And so one of the things that God is getting ready to do, I've said this before, if persecution comes to America, they're not going to say, look, oh, you got the right label or the wrong label, so we're not going to kill you. It's either do you believe in Jesus or don't you? And then you're going to have to make a choice. And so when that kind of pressure comes, nobody's going to care about a lot of the stuff that we, we care about. We take our preferences and we make them doctrines for people to live by. There are people that are going to heaven that wear earrings, that wear makeup, that, that uh, women who wear pants. There are people who are going to heaven that are one this UPC Pentecostal. There are people that are going to heaven that are Trinitarian, right? There are people that go to heaven that don't agree with you on everything. There are people that are going to heaven that don't have the revelation of everything that you have or that I have, and we don't have the, what they have, but they have Jesus and they've been born again and they're filled with the Holy Spirit. And so what I've been preaching for the last couple of years, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit, not the unity of the label, not the unity of your church organization, not the unity of your race. Where the kingdom needs to get is unity of the spirit. But what, what what's unfortunately is, you know, I see these people over here, they might do things a little bit differently. I see these guys, they might do something differently. But for the most part, when they look out at the world, I see like the same things being addressed, the same agendas being pointed out. And it's like, it would be beautiful if this group, and this has been my heart, People don't understand why I talk the way that I do and I move the way that I do. Here at Firehouse Church, I bring people from both groups and even the other group, what do you call it, the non-denominational. As long as I know what, I can discern that you're born again and that you're filled with the Holy Spirit. And that's where the deliverance had to take place. 
because deliverance isn't just throwing up. Deliverance isn't just rolling on the floor and all oh, demons and the demons are talking. I've seen when the preach word of God goes forth, people get deliverance and surgery in their mind because your mindset changes. You get delivered from a mindset. All of us need delivered. The Bible says, give no place to the devil. This flesh is flesh. Our soul is saved. Our flesh is not. Paul says, I, you know, I want to do the right thing, but do the wrong thing. It doesn't matter what camp you come from. You still have flesh that you have to crucify. You still have imperfections that you have to die to. Right. And so we have to follow the spirit of Christ. This flesh is going to be flesh. And everybody has flesh. The Bible says he who says he's without sin is a liar. So it doesn't matter if what label you want to put it on. All of us are disqualified. The important part is, are you filled with the Spirit of God? Now, many of you who are watching this, if you come from the UPC, you know maybe David Bernard. If you go watch a debate that he did, I think it was with this guy like Gene Cook or something like that. They were debating Trinity Oneness. He acknowledges, he says, look, this is my brother in Christ. He says it. He, he, and, and this is the part that blows my mind. It's like, if I can acknowledge that you are my brother in Christ, you know what I'm saying? If I see that you're looking at the world and you're seeing the same agendas and we're talking about the same things. So the Holy Spirit is talking to you and the Holy Spirit is talking to me, but we can't talk together and we can't work together. And so what I do here at Firehouse, as long as I know the person is filled with the Spirit of God, even if I know that they don't agree with me on everything, I bring them and I teach my church to do what? Test the Spirit. You don't need to know where this man of God, where this woman of God came from. You, didn't, you don't need to have a theological conversation with them. Test the spirit. And the truth of the matter is many people, they cannot do that because there are Christians who are not filled with the spirit. They're not. They're not filled with the spirit of God. And so they, they have to test the label. They have to test theology because there's not enough Holy Spirit in them to discern that's a real man of God. That's a real woman of God. And that's why we have all this confusion and division because most people are looking through the lens of their denomination and what they were taught in their religion and then doing it also from a prideful place that if they see a label that is not their label, it's not unity in the spirit. It's unity in their denominational camp and their religion. I don't move like that. I can sit and look someone in the eyes and tell, is this a son of God? Is this a daughter of God, right? Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. What's inside is going to come out. The Holy Spirit will be quick to be like, nope, this guy's a counterfeit. Nope, this guy's a wolf. Nope, this guy's doing it for the money. And then, of course, the thing is you got to meet people where they are. Everybody is at a different place of revelation. But some of the things that are, are, that are revelations are not a heaven or hell issue, right? Some of you got to get the revelation just because she doesn't wear a skirt. She's still going to heaven. So why can't you work with your sister? Now, some of you got to get the revelation of this. God is a genius, right? God does have, in a sense, just like there's different tribes, right? There's different tribes, but there's one Israel. There's different camps, different preachers, different types of ministers. Some preachers get fired up. Some preachers are more calm. Some preachers might talk a little bit more about this, a little bit more about that. That's fine if they're filled with the spirit of God, because God knows that people are unique. Paul says, I become all things to all men that I might win them. He that winneth souls is wise. God knows that there are some people that simply cannot receive from me. Maybe it's my past. Maybe it's my face. Maybe it's because I'm bald. Maybe it's because I get passionate and I, and I preach with fire and they just, they can't receive from me, but there's, it's deeper, right? Maybe they were abused. So when a pastor is yelling and getting fired up, they, they just can't receive that. And this is the genius of God. God knows that there are women who have been molested. They've been abused. They've been sexually promiscuous. So he'll send them to a church where the rules are like, yes, you can only wear skirts because these women have made their bodies an idol and they use their body on Instagram and social media to, to prostitute themselves to get what they want. So God in his genius, he might send them to a church that's more strict, right? To keep them. And vice versa. There's people that have been abused that were that grew up in those churches. And, and so now you know what you you were doing this, you were doing that, but you were molesting me, you were doing this. So God will bring them out of it and put them somewhere else. And that is God's job. 
There's he he has so many different types of people that can reach different types of people. That's why even with some of these ministers, right, that I don't agree with, right? I look and I say, okay, the person who listened to them though, were they sincere? According to your faith, might be whole. The preacher you're listening to, I might not necessarily agree, but if your heart was sincere and the word of God is going forth and you applied it and something changed in you, cool. You can grow from there. I'm not going to just bash you. Hey man, this guy, da, 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 da. I give you, I give you one example of a guy that I know is saved and I don't care what nobody says. Gino Jennings. Gino Jennings, I know for a fact that he wouldn't uh, like me, you know, agree with me on some things, a lot of things, because I've listened to him speak. But I know that man is going to heaven. The same way, like I told you guys, I've been in those churches. I know the presence of God is there. Some of you should go visit because you just listen to what other people told you. And, and it's the same thing, like I said, with Firehouse. Come to Firehouse, come visit, and you're going to see. You're going to feel the presence of God. Then you'll be like, man, this is why people are hating. This is why people are saying this and this because the devil don't want you to experience it. So I'm the kind of person, look, I don't have to agree. I'm going to test the spirit. And so with all that being said, another area where I've been praying for healing and deliverance is because I won't pick a group, I'm pretty much isolated by myself. I have a lot of Nicodemuses in my life, people who they message me privately, they love me privately, but then it's a different thing publicly because we have all this politicking that goes on in the church. And, and, and so because of my platform, I'm connected to everybody you can think of. I've talked to big Christian celebrities, preachers, rappers. I've had everybody for the most part, you know, who's like really into Christian. I've had interactions with so many different people, whether it's, you know, uh, John Gray, Paula White, um, what do you call it? Uh, Lecrae, you know, because of my platform, right? There's so many people who follow me for different reasons. Some people follow me because I was doing the motivational preaching. Some people follow me because of the music. Some people follow me because they say, man, this guy's, he's bold. He's speaking out against the LGBTQ. Some pe they, so people follow me for a lot of different reasons. That's why the church is so very diverse. We got white people, black people, young people, all kinds of different people because people follow me for different reasons. Most influencers, they, they do one thing and they do it really good. And so most of their followers are very similar. My followers are very diverse because I do a lot of different things. So they come from a lot of different denominations. They come from a lot of different camps. And so there's all these people always messaging me privately. And the, the thing is, because I won't pick a box and because I won't bow down and be quiet, I have to deal. And it is some pain. It is some hurt. And I'm constantly dying to my flesh about the rejection. That's why you guys don't really see me with anybody you know from time to time I, I go you know do different things but i've been doing this for a long time and you don't see me really connected with anybody because they're like hey don't say this don't talk and they'll tell me privately hey bro you're i some of your favorite preachers have told me hey you're, you're right about uh the trinity thing you're right about this you're right about, but they won't say it publicly because they say man if i say that publicly you know my people are going to kill me they're not going to understand they're not going to get it so i the point is from the, if you've been watching from the beginning of this video what i'm talking about I've seen a side of Christianity that most people don't get to see because of my experiences growing up, right? And then also because of my platform, it connects me to a lot of different people. And so I've seen things behind the scene that just has me like, man, and I want unity, but I don't want to be fake in order to have unity. This is why if you guys remember, and I'm just being real, right? If you go back, I said, I said some things about Maverick City that God showed me. People were mad because they were popping. They were trendy at the time. I said, no, this is what God showed me. Ruslan, a lot of people got upset. It ended, it ended up being true, right? Um, especially concerning Dante Bo. I had to stand 10 toes down. And because of that, a lot of people didn't want to associate with me because everybody's all about connections. And we see this a lot, like, you have people in the church that have a platform, do something crazy, do something foul, and everybody sees it. And two weeks later, they're on a flyer together and nobody cares because it's all this politicking stuff. So it's like I could just be quiet and just go along with it. And then, yes, I would get more opportunities. But remember, like I said, I had a decision to make. 
asked God, do you want me to pick a side? He said, no, because he wants to bring these sides together. And a lot of people, they don't want it. There's a lot of times I get invited, you know, to preach places and there's Christian, don't bring him. He's a this, he's a that, and I'm not going to work with him and things like that. And it's sad because, you know, when, when I go places, man, God moves, glory to God. Like, and, and I, I carry something that's unique, it's different because of the experiences, but people will fight it. You know what I'm saying? And so a lot of times the enemy will try to make you feel like you're crazy because some of you, you see the same things that I'm talking about. Here, here's the other thing, right? That whole demon slayer stuff that was going on, it's on record. I said, look, God is going to break a lot of this stuff up. Because a lot of people, they're connecting, and it's not for the right reasons. They're connecting because they're using each other for views. They're using each other, trying to build their thing. And it happened. There, I have a very good track record. Even though people don't want to admit it, they don't want to. I can go down the list of things that I said two years ago, three years ago, and then it comes to pass. And people, they act like, oh, he never said that. And so the price of that is, guess what? You say it, it comes to pass. Or you say it, people get mad about it. It comes to pass. They don't honor. They don't apologize. And so you're just isolated. But you did what God told you to do. And it hurts. Sometimes I, I've sat here and said, man, God, am I, am I being religious? Like, am I doing too much? Because the people, the lukewarm people will make you think that you're crazy. The religious people on either side will make you think that you're crazy. And then here, think about this. People who are not balanced in the spirit will make you think that you're out of balance, right? I see all the time people say, man, every everything you preach is negative. I said, no, the things that you look at, I do so many positive, inspirational videos, right? But if you listen to what everybody got to say, they'll trick you out of obeying God. No, you need to put this label on it or you're not of God. You need to dress like this. You need to look like everybody's got an opinion. And that's why I'm a big believer on work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. I don't try to control people at Firehouse. I don't tell them, look, you got to agree with me on everything. I said, look, you just better know God's voice for yourself. You better seek God's voice for yourself. And, and, and at the end of the day, then you'll be all right. But I don't need you to just do everything like me and agree with everything that I say. And a lot of churches, it's really all about control. It makes people uncomfortable when they can't put you in a box. That's why you'll see these people get on. I'm going to, I'm going to wrap this video up. That's why you see these people get on the, the YouTube and they'll say, Marcus Rogers is at this. He's a oneness. Da, 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 da. They want to put me in a box. And when I say, no, look, I'm not that. I'm not any of these things. I don't do these man-made words. I just believe the Bible from front to back. I believe everything that is in the Bible, everything the Bible says. I believe that Jesus is God. I believe that Jesus is the only way, you know, and, and, and it makes people mad because it's like, no, you need to do it like this. And that's carnal and it's religious. And like I told you, Jesus said, you're my disciple. If you continue on following my words, all of these words that got the church divided in America, they're man-made. And people hate when I say that you're, you're fighting over what a man told you to say. Jesus didn't tell you to use these words. Paul didn't tell you to use these words. The disciples didn't. The Bible tells us to have unity in the spirit. But the problem is every Christian is not filled with the spirit. And that's why there's so much confusion in the body of Christ. There's people that they say that they're Christian, but they're not full of the Holy Spirit. So everything they think is from the carnal perspective, our religious perspective, or what they've been taught. And, the, and so it's the things that you're talking about, the things that I'm saying right now, there's somebody, they're looking at their phone right now. They're like, what is he talking about? Because some things, it has to be revealed to you. Now, here's the thing. If you're watching this and you come from any of these camps, you have to be humble enough for it to be revealed to you. And so I, that's why I said I prayed. I said, God, what do you want me to do? Do you want me to pick a side? He said, no. He said, I want to use you to keep preaching this unpopular message to bring the body together to prepare for what is to come. And unfortunately, I think that it will take some serious persecution for the body to come together in America, for us to stop arguing about some things that are not important, for us to stop being so prideful about, well, you know, you don't dress like this, you don't look like this, you don't say it like this, so I can't work with you. It would be so powerful 
if we could get away from the clicks and just get the body to come together and just give people Jesus. Tell them, hey, repent, be born again. Jesus is the best thing that could ever happen to you. It would be so powerful, so amazing. But unfortunately, what happens is we dishonor because if you don't do it like us, it's not a real move of God. So that's what I'm going to do. And 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 the reality is, you know, it, it has hurt. You know what I'm saying? I don't get to be in the cool kids club. And then another reason I don't get to be in the cool kids club is because people don't want the controversy that comes with what I'm saying. They just want to, they just want to bow down and be in their little religious clique and, you know, use their lingo. But I'm telling you, a time is coming. God's going to break that stuff up, even though people don't want to hear it. It's not going to matter what label you have. All that matters is what's on the inside. Because if you got the right label, but ain't nothing on the inside, you're going to bow, you're going to compromise, you're going to sell out. And so that's my point. I've seen people with the right label from both sides, all sides, compromise, be fake. So I'm not going to sit there and, and people, oh, what you have with God ain't real because this, this, this. Bro. You guys over there doing drugs. You guys over there fornicating. You guys over there lukewarm. You guys over there still cussing, having a form of godliness. So you're saying the right words out of your mouth, but you're not on fire. You're not bold. You're not sold out. You're not going hard for the kingdom. You see what I'm saying? So y'all pray for me. You know what I'm saying? That's 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 the message that God has given me. And, um, you know, I've been saying it now for a couple of years and a lot of people, they don't like it. You know, there's a lot of people in the political world who know me, you know, uh, people close to Trump and this. But it's like it seems like how you got to do things in this in this world. Right. It's like, oh, he's a Christian, but he be talking about speaking in tongues. He be talking about casting demons out. So, like, we like when you talk the political stuff, but it gets kind of weird for us when you saying Christians shouldn't cuss and. Christians shouldn't drink and Christians shouldn't cuss us. Uh, I mean, Christians shouldn't smoke and all. And you talking about casting out devils and deliverance, right? That's where it gets it gets weird. So we like you, all right, bro. We we love your ministry. You're so bold. You're saying the same things that we're saying. But why can't you just say you're a Trinitarian and then we can connect with you? Right. People want you to be a certain way because of the politics of it. Man, we we love you. You you're awesome, man. We we support what you're doing, but you know your your girls they're not wearing skirts, so it is what it is, right? So hey, just pray for me. I just wanted to get on here, be vulnerable with you guys, be honest with you guys, you know, let you hear my heart. You know, from time to time I like to get on here and just, you know, I know some of you do genuinely love me and you're praying for me. And uh even if you watch this video, like I said, and let me let me thank you, Lord. Let me say this. The Bible says, give no place to the devil. So because we're all flesh, we're capable of getting it wrong. We're capable of making mistakes. We're capable, like, that's why you got to give people grace to grow. There's things that I've said in the past, you know, there's things, you know, that, you know, you grow. And when you grow in the public eye, it's even a little bit difficult. But the reality is all of us have fallen short. All of us are disqualified. But it's the grace of God and because of Jesus of sacrifice that we can be used, right? And so um, understand that all of us are, are messed up. All of us are capable of being hypocritical. And when we stop being fake and we stop trying to act religious and holier than now, and we stop trying to hide the fact that, you know, you're, you're trying to, it's manipulation. You try to present like, oh, I've always, I've only been married one time and I've never been divorced and I never, yeah, but you've done other things. And the Bible says, if you break one of these laws, you're guilty of breaking them all. So when we stop doing all the, like I said, I want to have unity but I don't want to be, I don't want to have to be fake in order to do it. And that's what I've seen personally. You either have to click up and ignore all of the hypocrisy and lukewarm stuff that is going on. Don't say anything about it. Don't talk about Maverick City. Don't talk about this guy drinking. Don't talk about this one in fornication. Don't talk about the fact that, 
you you're a worship leader, but you have a nasty attitude and you treat people bad behind the scenes. Don't talk about that your favorite YouTube influencer is a bold faced liar getting in the camera, being a bold face, like oh, that's being messy. That's being controversial. And so what a lot of people do, they click up and it's just fake. I'm sorry, like nobody wants to hear that, but that's what it is. So to me, it's not that I think I'm better, right? I understand that people are flesh. Why can't we have unity, come together, agree to give people Jesus, but at the same time, let's have some of these tough conversations. That's why you guys seen I've, I've went on other people's channels you know, uh, who don't like me or don't agree with me and things like that, because I believe these conversations are important. If it was up to me, I would bring all of these guys into one room and have a conversation, um, whether it's the Lecrae's, uh, the Pagani's, the uh, Greg Locks, uh, Jenny Weavers, uh, uh, Gino Jennings. You know, I would bring all these people in one room and let's sit and let's talk Bible. Let's sit and have these conversations. But people don't want to do it because. They know there's going to be controversy. Um, every time I go on a channel with somebody who maybe doesn't necessarily like me or they call me a heretic, it never fails. Alan Parr, uh, what was it, the Smart Christian Channel, even Ruslan, uh, they always end up calling me brother in Christ every single time, right? And then they get so much backlash. Oh, he's a this, he's a that, he's a that. So a lot of people, they just don't want to deal with that. Let's just focus on making money. Let's just focus on views. And that's the easy way out. And I think the only reason we've been able to get away with that is because the persecution hasn't really turned up in America. But I think something is coming to America where hey, all that stuff is going to get exposed. Like God is really going to show people. And then a lot of the things that we're fighting about, arguing about, divided about, it's not going to matter. All I'm going to, all I want to know is, are you filled with the spirit of God? And are you gonna are you gonna stand when everybody else bows? You know, so go to www.marcusrogersministries.org um, if you want to support what I'm doing here in Chicago. Need all the help that I can get. Couldn't do what I'm doing without you guys. Um, go stream the music and just type "Amen." Uh, if I know what was this, 52 minutes? If I got my point across and it was clear, and maybe you got a better understanding of why I am. The way that I am, you know what I'm saying? Type amen if you got it, because I know that was a little bit more long-winded. I wanted the video to be about 20 minutes, but sometimes you just got to let it flow. Uh, so the point is, I know there's people saved in this group. I know there's people saved in that group, in this group, and I'm just going to discern by the spirit and by their fruit. Now, I'm not going to argue about theology and all that kind of stuff like that. Have you had a real encounter with God? And is there real change? And then we can have discussions about the theological stuff. That's fine. But as long as you're not preaching some crazy stuff that goes against the Bible, that's not in the Bible, I don't have no problem with it. Like people get mad at me. This is what I preach. Repent, be baptized. You shall receive the Holy Ghost, right? People get mad about that. These signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They'll cast out devils that shall speak with new tongues. That's what I preach. I just preach what the Bible says. I believe it. People say, well, that's not what that means. I mean, hey, look, that's what it says. That's what I believe. I see it work. You might not agree. Cool. We could talk about it. We can have a conversation. But we're not we're not preaching, hey, you need to put a crystal on your head and tarot cards and Christian witchcraft and you can be shagged. Like we're not, we're preaching against sin. We're preaching repentance. We're preaching living holy. And I think if you're preaching those things, you're preaching that people must be born again. You're preaching that Jesus is God and Jesus is the only way. I think that we should be able to come together. You know what I'm saying? And man, it would be crazy if we came together. And so that's what I'm going to keep on preaching. You know what I'm saying? Love you guys. Be blessed. Be encouraged. Have a wonderful day in Jesus' name.